It is characterized typically by a ventricular rate of about 150 beats per minute and an atria rate of about twice that. So normally you see a two to one rate between the atria contracting and the ventricles contracting. In terms of the features on an ECG, you're going to see a sawtooth baseline with a regular QRS complex. And typically you'll see a two to one block. So there should be two uh, atrial contractions or P waves on the ECG as compared to the QRS complex, which will be representative ventricular contraction. Apart from gender, there are a number of other risk factors that atrial flutter shares with atrial fibrillation. So patients who have thyroid disorders, have high blood pressure, have valvular disorders of their heart, have had um, an ischemic event in their heart or an inflammatory disorder of their heart, such as pericarditis, or had some sort of cardiac procedure, are at risk of developing atrial flutter. Other conditions include lung conditions. So patients with similar lung conditions as in atrial fibrillation, such as pneumonia, COPD, are also at risk of developing atrial flutter. Finally, there are also medications that put one at risk of developing atrial flutter. Particularly, um, flecainide and propofenone are cited as other risk factors for atrial flutter. You can classify atrial flutter as typical or non-typical. Typical atrial flutter is a re-entrant atrial tachycardia, whereby you have an anti-clockwise rhythm if you're looking at the tricuspid valve face on. So the rhythm will go upwards up the interatrial septum and down the right side of the right atrium in, a clock, in an anti-clockwise fashion. Patients can present with a number of different symptoms. They may complain of overtly chest pain, palpitations, shortness of breath, or have collapsed. In terms of clinical examination, they may be in shock, in which case you need, you need to progress quickly to doing an ECG, working up the patient and giving them cardioversion using about 50 joules via monophasic defibrillation. Other features on an ECG or other on clinical exam would include the patient may have features of cardiogenic shock, so they will have raised JVP, they may have fluid in their lungs and a low blood pressure. There are a number of key principles in terms of the treatment of atrial flutter. As I said, in emergency cases where the patient either has features of acute heart failure or cardiogenic shock or has abnormal vital signs that, are that indicate the patient is critically unwell, you need to proceed straight away to emergency cardioversion. In other cases, you need to look then at rate controlling the patient using an either calcium channel blocker such as dil diltiazem or verapamil or a beta blocker such as esmolol, and then calculating the thromboembolic risk in the patient as atrial flutter may predispose a patient to developing atrial thrombi, which may then embolize into either the cerebral or systemic vasculature, and therefore performing a chance to vasc risk score and also calculating the bleeding risk of the patient are important as part of working up the patient's need for anticoagulation.